Wow, this image looks amazing. I wonder what Dolly 3 could do with this prompt. Interesting. Wait a minute. Adorned? Reminiscent of? Echoing the essence of? These prompts are not at all what I sent. I guess it's time to learn how ChatGPT really works with Dolly 3. Hey there, it is I versus AI. In order to get the most out of ChatGPT's integration of Dolly 3, you need to understand how it works behind the scenes. This is the system prompt, which I pulled today for Dolly 3. The system prompt are instructions written by OpenAI, which are sent to the model behind the scenes when you begin a chat. It tells ChatGPT how to interact with the tools that it uses, like in this case, Dolly. And OpenAI's custom instructions are filled with a long list of policies and restrictions on the model, which means that if you don't understand how these policies and restrictions are limiting the model, it'll be hard to work with it and get what you need from Dolly 3, particularly the final two instructions in this long list, which are the prompt must intricately describe every part of the image in concrete objective detail. Think about what the end goal of the description is and extrapolate that to what would make satisfying images. All descriptions sent to Dali should be a paragraph of text that is extremely descriptive and detailed. Each should be more than three sentences long. This is why ChatGPT is interfering in your image generation process by rewriting your prompts. It is being instructed to do so by OpenAI. There is a way around this though, and it involves just one word, verbatim, which means in exactly the same words as were used originally. So if I add an instruction which asks ChatGPT to please create the images with the following prompt verbatim in caps, which I have found is effective for strongly influencing the model, which you can see that OpenAI is doing in their own system prompt to ChatGPT, means that now your beautifully crafted prompt, which worked wonderfully in mid-journey, is now sent to Dolly 3 as well. By the way, this girl is adorable. I also want to bring point number six of the system instructions to your attention because it instructs ChatGPT to indicate an image type and art style like photo, oil painting, watercolor painting, and so on. It also instructs ChatGPT to make at least one to two of the four images photos unless otherwise specified. This is easy to get around and can be used to your benefit if you just want a picture of a cat and they're unsure which type of picture would work well, then just ask for a cat and you'll get four different types of images, one to two of which will be a photo. If you want to override this, just simply indicate what art style that you want to use. Number two indicates that ChatGPT will only create a certain number of images. The default max generations in previous versions of the system prompt were set to four. So that's why you'll always get four images, even if you request more. And each of those images will be in a certain resolution. By default, square. A way around this, if you know that you mostly want wide images, which I do, is to put in your custom instructions a line like DALI 3. Always produce wide resolution images and then include this specific aspect ratio as well. Ever since I put that into my custom instructions, I do always get wide images unless I ask for square or tall. If you ask for a full body portrait, you'll get tall by default. The most important part of the system prompt for our purposes is at the very bottom, where OpenAI specifies to ChatGPT what the functions and parameters are that it can send to Dolly 3 when it makes a request, specifically regarding the seeds. Also, as part of this chat link I'm going to share down in the description in the pinned comment, I've also included my master plugin prompt because Dolly 3 is nothing more than just another plugin. It shows the available functions and parameters, including some examples, a basic prompt, a use case interpretation, some advanced prompts, and some unusual prompts, which I'll touch on in a moment. But what we want to focus on are the seeds, which is an optional parameter that uses specific seeds for image generation. 
A seed is a series of numbers. In this case, it's 10 random numbers that allow you to recreate images that are very similar, meaning that you can somewhat get consistent characters, which is something that many people want and many image generators have a hard time doing. You can also use a seed to replicate an exact image. Let's check out how seeds work. Please give me an image of a geeky 35-year-old African-American woman with purple hair who is wearing a stylish top and glasses and has a friendly smile. She is sitting by a lake on a sunny day. And each image has a corresponding seed. You can skip the step of asking ChatGPT to give you the seed by simply asking it to do so when you send your prompt. The cool thing about seeds is it allows you to get some control over the randomness of diffusion model image generation. In other words, the kind of noise that you see when an image first starts to generate in, for example, mid-journey and how it then coalesces into a final image. So let's use the seed and the prompt to recreate the top image. Instead of placing our subject in front of a lake on a sunny day, let's place her in front of a forest on a snowy day, with the goal being to keep as much of the original character's look as possible while changing the background. When you click on an image in Dolly 3, the prompt that was used to create the image will be on the right-hand side. Copy it and paste it here with the following instructions. Use the following prompt verbatim. Then change serene shores of a lake to serene edge of a forest and under the bright sun to under a snowy sky. Then send your prompt and you will get this image, which is very similar to the image of our subject in front of a lake. In fact, let's compare. This is the first image in front of a lake and the second image in front of a forest. The images look fairly similar in her facial structure and the glasses that she's wearing, though it did change her hair. It's not an exact one-to-one, -one, but seeds can get you much closer to consistent characters. Using a seed and a prompt, anyone, go ahead and try it, can make this exact image. Just copy and paste the prompt and the seed and put it into your Dolly 3 and you'll get the exact same images. I mentioned that I was going to share this master plugin prompt with you. And the neat thing about it is that it gives you some really fun advanced prompts and unusual prompts, including design a cartoon where a pineapple and a tomato are having a debate on who's the real fruit. ChatGPT generated these super cute four images, but my particular favorite is this one here because I love how they're having like a 2023 debate, like they're running for office and the best part are like these completely static people who are all very similar up here versus this angry fruit mob in the back. I love this. It's so cute. And with the prompt and the seed, you can generate a very similar image between a banana and an avocado. Personally, I'm voting for the banana. Whereas yes, you can send a very specific prompt to Dolly 3 through ChatGPT. And as ChatGPT, to set a different random seed for each generation so that you get a mid-journey-like experience like you can see here, I found that it is better to work with the strengths of ChatGPT, including its incredible and sometimes deeply amusing gift for vivid imagery. The ability for the model to come up with things that you would not have thought of can augment your image generation process. Yes, you may not get the image that is exactly in your mind for a very specific thing. And I would say that Midjourney AI, Leonardo AI, or even Stable Diffusion would be better for that task. But where ChatGPT really excels is the ability to make the insane look absolute oh that looks awful no matter which way you slice it <laughs> look at the little cake topper that's awful is anybody hungry because i'm sure not now with dolly 3 you can use ChatGPT in so many creative ways. I like to use ChatGPT for some real life use cases like helping me build the computer I'm recording this on. I show you how I did that, a complete breakdown in this video on screen right now.